Tommy here from Lauren Systems, and Supermicro had sent me the Super Storage 6019P ACR12L Plus 1U server, and I did a review of it the other day. I also wanted to test it with some software, so I loaded TrueNAS on there, and I wanted to set up Plex. And while I'm setting it up, I figured it's a great opportunity for a tutorial on how to configure Plex with TrueNAS Core, including a very important aspect, making sure you have the permissions right, not just so Plex can read the media files, but so you can set up a share and also add media files and get the permissions sorted out. The new ACL system is different than the previous videos I've done on this. I've done a video specifically on the ACL system. If you just want to dive into that, I'll leave a link to that video because um, it's on free NAS ACLs, but the ACLs copied over to true NAS in terms of the way they work. But I'm going to show you, walk you through step by step, how to load the Plex plugin, how to create the share or set the permissions on the share and how to make a additional user belong to the same share group, there were, therefore you're easily able to uh, add media files to it. Also, I am doing this on a server that has 144 terabytes or available, um, about 96 terabytes, even after we put it all into a RAID. We'll talk about that a little bit first about design of the system, uh, which is way overkill for Plex, but hey, that makes it that much more fun because, you know, why not have 190 uh, two gigs of RAM along with an MVME pool that we're going to run Plex on and a data storage pool <laughs> of uh, drives as well to just, you know, because you've got to have a lot of videos and a lot of media that are on there. Uh, before we get started on that, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. Now, once you have FreeNAS all loaded up, when you first go to set up a plugin, there's a little gear icon here, and you have to choose what pool, if you have more than one, if you have one pool, there's only one option here, which pool you want the plugins to live on. And I'm gonna choose the MVME pool because, hey, why not? As MVMEs are nice and fast, so that seems like a great place to put the actual plugins and the IO cage and the jails and where all the pools will live. From there, we are going to choose either Plex Media Server or Plex Media Server Beta. The beta is going to be, I believe, a slightly newer version, but does require a Plex Pass subscription to do that. Now, quick note about these plugins. These are ones officially supported by IAC Systems. They've separated them. If you're not familiar with the way the plugins work, these are community supported, uh, so they do have them. In case you're wondering where the other ones are, that's what that drop down does, and it's just a matter of where the support comes from. We're just going to go ahead and load the basic one, assuming you don't have a Plex subscription, but that really doesn't change things either way, whether whichever one you load. So we're going to go ahead and click install. And this is our Plex Flex. We'll just give it a silly name. And uh, plugin name is Plex Media Server. DHCP is fine. I don't usually recommend, unless you have some special use case, for setting up static IP. And the reason I bring that up is because usually I let it be DHCP and then I go into my firewall router, which hands out the DHCP addresses, or in your case, whichever one, whatever system you have doing that, and then I statically assign it that way. This makes it easier of generally how I organize most things. I let the firewall router or whatever the DHCP server assign all of my devices so they all have addresses that I can easily change and just restart the server. and I know where everything is. So I'm going to leave it at DHCP. And it's going to go ahead and create the plugin container, download the latest version, and we'll just fast forward through this part while it uh, gets set up. It goes relatively fast depending on the server. This server is going to go really fast. All right, so we have the plugin installed successfully, and it gives us where we can go for the admin portal. Or when you go here, it's going to refresh real quick. You can see it's a little expand and then we can go to manage and they have a demo user set up as plex at lawrencesystems.com this is actually something i created uh just so i could do testing on this video it's not a actual plex pass one but we can sign in go through the server setup please wait a moment while plex starts and we're going to skip uh, paying it we'll call it the plex flex server 
I'm not worried about media outside the home. That's an up to you option. We're not going to add a library now. We'll do that after and done. Now we are set up and no files in here. We just have the Plex server up and running and we're signed in. So pretty straightforward, nothing to do yet. And right now we have to stop the server because now we got to get all of our libraries in there. Now, the way a jail works is it is, and we'll actually look at the jail itself. So there's plugins and jails. Plugins are automated jails that are installs. You can also want to have videos on manually creating jails. So let's look at the PlexFlex one here. And we can see we have mount point, stop, update, shell, etc. What I want to show is where they actually live. So if we go to pools, we scroll down to IO cage, we look at the jails, and we see here's that jail. Now, technically, not the best idea. Yes, you could dump files into the jail natively, but the idea of a jail and the reason for them is they're where the files live in terms of the OS. So the operating system or the plugins may live in there, but you want to keep your data elsewhere. That way, if you ever had to rebuild or destroy a jail, it's not a big deal. You can just rebuild or destroy it and your data lives in a different share. So we've already created that share right here called PlexFex, and we'll I'll walk you through that in a second, but there's a couple little housekeeping things we need to do first. And one of them is talking about how permissions work with ACLs. This is the user we have to create, user 972. Now, for every user that you have that runs a service, services run as a username. Plex runs as user 972 on both FreeNAS and TrueNAS. This is where the confusion sometimes can come in. So what we do is, and this is not part of the official IAC system instructions, um, but I think it should be. That's why I'm making a video on it. You can just create and throw user 972 at things and have it unnamed. There's an easier way. And now our, each plugin has a different user. So if you're using sonar, radar, transmission, um, you there's ways to look it up and there's comments on there. And as you go through the plugins, you can figure out what username each one belongs to. We're gonna go ahead and go over here to accounts, users. And all I had to do was you add a user. Now, normally when you add a user, it starts at a higher number, but we started with the Plex user. So we just created a user 972. I called it Plex. Plex. It's already in use. It's, I'm just showing you how I went through the creation. You can create some random password, which is probably not a bad idea to create something long in case anyone tried to hack this and guess in because they had local access to your network and wanted to be that user. Use a long random password, but don't worry. You never need it. Uh, so you don't even have to remember what it is. But that's all I did was create that. Then this is what that user looks like created. So we'll go ahead and edit that user just to show you. It's Plex, username Plex, some password that I don't remember. I mashed on the keyboard um, twice at a some long <laughs> high entry password. And then we have the primary group as Plex. Pretty straightforward. Now what this allows you to do when you're setting up the ACLs is just type the word Plex instead of user 987. And that's what they said to do here. And it does work. It will work if you just call it 987. Then we also have a user Tom that I created and Tom is user 1001. So what we did with Tom is now that we created the Plex user, we also created the Plex group ID of 1000 and then the Tom one. So if we click on the Plex group ID and we look at the members, we made Tom, Plex was already a member because it's its own group, and we made Tom a member of the Plex group. These are the important steps to before we get to the ACL part that you've already done this. If not, if you create the share and then go edit ACLs, you won't be able to add these because they won't exist yet. So once you've got this part done, then we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go to storage pools. Now I've already got this one created called PlexFlex that we're gonna use. And we can edit the ACL and pretty much look how it works here. So we have a default ACL root and wheel, but then we change who, access control list, user Plex, ACL type allow, permission type basic, permission full control, and group, group users is Plex. I mean, you could type 987 in there like they mentioned, but it looks nice when we type Plex. Um, ACL type allow, basic permission. Permissions are full control. Pretty straightforward. And then we would apply them recursively and away we go. Now, just to walk you through real quick what it is, we'll create a test one right here. So if we add a data set, test, submit, and then we go here. Edit ACL, change this to user, EL, Plex, 
then allow. We'll just do basic. You can get advanced with this, but we're just covering the basics here where you can get granular with it. We have the group. We'll make this this group and we'll change it to user plex. And remember, Tom is a member of this user as well. And we don't care about the granular options again. So we're just going to say it's an allow rule. Permissions are advanced. Full control. We do want the inherit flags. We don't need this everyone group. We're not adding multiple groups. Yes, you could. There's more options you can dive into on this. Watch my video on uh, ACLs. So inherit. So now we've got user, plex, ACL, allow, permission type, basic, full control. That's important. And the same thing here. Group is plex, allow, basic, full control, uh, file type, basic, inherit, apply recursively. In case there's a bunch of... Uh, sub information you have in there this makes sure you have if you have a lot of data already dumped in here, a lot of different folders you supply all of it on there and if you ever screw up there is the uh, strip acl option to remove all acls and start over especially if you've got really crazy ones that you've built up over time or someone else did um, when we're fixing things sometimes we start with strip and then start over so we do it right so hit save and that's it that's all you got to do for an acl and that's how we created these ones here which we'll just look at it again you can see all the basic options. Please make sure that that inherit one, if you're setting it up, that's uh, clicked. Now sharing, gotta be able to get data into there. So how did we do that? So we create a window share and it's really straightforward creating a window share. We can uh, edit right here. We just, well, I'll go through a new one real quick, but you can edit and see what it was, but it's it's under Deadpool, FlexFlex, cool, default share parameters. There's nothing, unless you have some other things, the default share parameters are fine, and uh, submit. It won't let me do it because this one already exists, but we could do the test. Uh, we could do the test one. If we wanted to move it around or however you want. So no big deal there. Pretty straightforward on how to do the share. Now, of course, we have to test the share. And I've already dumped a bunch of data in there for it to index, but let's go ahead and test it. Now I'm doing this in Linux, and if it was Windows, it would be backslash backslash IP address. In Linux, it's a little different. It's SMB colon slash slash 192.168.3.213. That is, this is the, right there, I've already logged in uh, with my username and password that I created for Tom. New folder, some data. Hey, cool, we can do that. We have read write access, so let's call it some data added. I don't like spaces, I like underscores. And, uh, they open this a new tab and let's dump some data in there. We know we got permission. We'll just, I don't know, whatever's in here. So we'll copy these and paste them. All right, cool. Now we have a couple extra video files that I threw in here that we can index for Plex. But of course, now we have to get that same data moved over into Plex. How does that work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So we're going to go over here, jails, I'm sorry, plugins. You can do it actually from either one, uh, but, we'll, but because this is technically a, a plugin installed from their plugin system, we're going to do it here. And we need to stop the plugin. Now, this is the design of jails. They don't have permission for anything more than you grant them for permission for. So the root of a jail actually is that IO cage slash jail slash name of the jail. So a jail is a mini system essentially running inside there. It's nested within and it only has the permissions given. The reason for this is that's a security feature. So if something were to happen to Plex, the only thing Plex would be able to access is whatever's in that jail and not access to the greater system. So it's kind of, you know, putting it in there. This is how containerization works. That's essentially what jails are is containers. You're containing it to only the uh, tools and things it has access to. That also includes file systems. So if someone were to manage to do something nefarious and get into your Plex server, what do they have access to? Well, only things you've granted Plex access to, including whatever data outside of Plex you've mounted in. So that's why the purpose are for these mount points. So we're going to go here and we're going to add a mount point. So source of a mount point. All right, Deadpool, and we have this Plex Flex. Great. So mount Deadpool Plex Flex. Destination, and that's this nested root here. So mount with IO cage lives and the jails live and the plugins all live on the MVME pool. So flex root, and then where do we want to put it? I'm going to stick it under mount. So if we put it under mount here, 
and we'll call it flex flex it'll automatically create whatever folder uh, you have or directory however you want to look at it from there so now we see it as this long path because we're at the system level once we're inside plex we see it as mount slash plex flex so when i start plex back up it sees its root as in root slash mount so slash being the very beginning directory this is a big difference how uh, these containers slash jails work is they are not able to traverse further up but like i said that's a security feature and that's why it's designed this way so all we do is hit submit and now we have source is here and destination is there pretty straightforward and we go back over to the plugins and we'll go ahead and start this plugin now, because this plugin does have rewrite access, it is possible uh, that from this plugin, if you were to delete something, it does have permission to delete. This is why there's one of the options of exporting these as a read-only option, so Plex could never write to there. May or may not have a use case for that. I did it read-write um, because I wanted it that way, but that is something just of note if you ever wanted to um, set it up so each plugin can only read data but would never have permission to potentially destroy data. Now we'll go ahead and go to manage again. Now that the plugin's up and running. All right, so once you're logged into Plex, we're gonna click on the little plus right here. And we want to add a library. Now, movies, TV shows, music, photos, those are gonna vary by what you're adding. We're adding other videos because what I actually dumped in there was a bunch of my own videos I created. So they're not technically movies or TV shows, they're just my YouTube videos I wanna index. And we'll call this uh, Plex Flex. That's the name we have on there. Let me go to next, browse for media folders. As I mentioned, slash is now the root of this, so it doesn't see the entire free NAS system. It sees slash mount though, and then it sees plex flex. Hey, look, there's all that stuff that, I, that is in there, which we go over here, there's the some data added, and I had this where I created, and you can see it's the same list of folders, but that's where we want it. So mount slash plex flex. So we go ahead in here and hit add, Add the library, and away it goes and starts indexing. That's it. Now you're good to go on this in terms of being able to play the movies, play stuff back, uh, whatever's in here. It's going to slowly generate thumbnails for these. All right. And hey, look, there's me reviewing the server that I'm now testing uh, this on with all the specifications. There's all the drives in there. So now we have our entire large massively overbuilt <laughs> Plex server here, uh, able to index all these videos. What if I wanted to add another library? Let's just go ahead and walk through the process again. So hit stop. And actually I have everything in here. So while this is stopping and over here, storage pools, and we have the LTS video dump. And what I did was I dumped my entire main primary free NAS over to this free NAS. We're going to head and edit the ACLs on this one here. And Let's see, do we have any of these set for Plex? Nope, I haven't done anything with it yet. So it's just a dump of data. Same thing again. So the user, Plex, allow, basic, full control, inherit, group, Plex, make sure it's allow, basic, full control, inherit all right apply permissions recursively confirm so i want to make sure everything in there has the right permissions and um yes that's 1.57 terabytes of videos uh that i dumped in there so there's our lts video dump and now go over here i want to go to the pl plugins Plex Flex, and we're gonna add another mount point. You can have as many mount points as you want. So here's the one we already have on this particular jail. And we're gonna go ahead and add another. So it's mount, the Deadpool. There's that one in the destination. We're gonna choose mount again, slash LTS video dump. Seems like a good name for it because it's just all the different videos I have in there, submit.
Now I could create a share so I can dump more videos in there, but um, the share permissions are going to be the same as they were on this one here. So if I wanted to create another share to that, no problem. We're not going to bother with that though. So we already have all the videos there. I'm going to go back over to the plugins. And we'll Fireplex back up. So start. You notice a little checkbox for boot. That is, of course, if you wanted to start every time you restart your uh, TrueNAS system, easy enough to do. Manage, close the expired session. We're gonna add another library of other videos again. We'll just call it LTS Video Dump. Next, browse for folders. Once again, here, mount, LTS Video Dump, add, add library. And uh, this may take a little while. This is going to certainly push the server a lot harder because uh, 1.5 terabytes, these are a lot of videos that are in here. So it's, it's going to take a minute to do all the scanning and uh, index all of this. And it still is indexing all these uh, while we're at it. So pretty straightforward how it all works. And then from here, you're just using Plex to do whatever. Now, yep, let's say you had some other services so right that you want to beautiful. throw in here. Uh, for example, oh, I don't know any other plugins or jails that you may want to share with it. You can also do the same thing as add those users for whatever the other plugin is. And we'll reference back over here to these blog permissions, radar, sonar, or transmission. Um, these would also, you could create a user so you don't have to call them 921, but it will work as calling it 921. And then you could add them to the group and then you can share. So the mount point can be in there for another one as well. So you don't have to have the mount point restricted to ex exclusively um, this, but you can add more than one. So that way more than one thing can dump data into that data set. So you can dump it through the share, you can dump it through uh, this methodology here, but you know, definitely methodologies by which you can do this. Now as a quick demo to show you how that would look, uh, I've taken this little test for another project I'm working on and you can look at the mount points for this test. And this is unrelated to not, well, I should say not directly related to the Plex one we did, but we did the same thing. We mounted here, we did it to here, and then we can go inside of that particular jail. Go here, go to the shell. CD slash mount, because I put it in the same place. I just called this one test. You can give it a different name because it's inside of a different jail. And you can see that it has access to the same files that um, the other system did. So not, not a problem being able to do that. Now, the last thing I guess we could cover is what's this system actually doing now that it's spent a few minutes indexing everything. All right, so Plex is doing its thing in the background, and now let's talk about the server itself. Now, I have a full review that talks about the hardware in the server, but we're going to talk about TrueNAS and how we have it set up. So this is an Intel Xeon Gold 6240 CPU at 2.6 gigahertz and offering 72 threads. And someone had commented of, why would you need that many for running a FreeNAS or TrueNAS server as it's going to be called now from here forward? I keep on to call it FreeNAS, but here's the easy answer. Here's Plex running inside of a jail using up a little bit of processor here. And that's because if you have a large media library, and if you think of the commercial use cases for these, this might be a strong use case where you have some tool that does run in a true NAS, maybe as a jail and indexes all of your media as it's being dumped there, maybe by multiple users. And this would be the result. You know, you need something to go ahead and index and organize all that data and keep it going. So. The pools themselves, what, how, how are they configured? So we go over here to storage and we go to pools. And Deadpool is first the big pool we have right here. Now I dumped over my video dump, which is about 1.57 uh, terabytes there. And the Plex has got another 33 gigs worth of data. This is set up and we'll go here to status, a RAID Z tool, RAID Z2 pool. Now this RAID Z2 is 12 drives in it with, they're all Seagate, 12 terabyte by 12, so 12 drives at 12 terabyte, uh, one big RAID Z2 pool. Now, why did I do it that way, not versus, you know, build six and six so you could get better performance, but that would come at the expense of losing space. I wanted to make the most space possible, and I have an entire, 
you know, breakdown video and forum post I'll leave a link to to discuss all the different RAID CFS pool and performance com uh, and capacity options that come in there. There's a lot to how that works in RAID-Z. That's why I have a whole, you know, section of my forums dedicated to the breakdown for all those works and all those options. And you may watch it and still not come to an easy conclusion. But if you're just going, hey, I just want something fairly resilient, but plenty of space, this is the way to go. Now, the other pool is the MVME pool. And this is where Plex itself and the jails, we told them to live on this particular pool. And if we go to status on this, we set it up as a really simple RAID-Z one with four NVMe drives. They're all 3.8 terabyte drives. So it gives us plenty of storage in that particular pool for NVMe. So it's going to be really fast. It's just not as much storage as we have over here. But, you know, there's still enough storage left over on this particular pool that we could have moved it over there. Uh, but this is, you know, really overkill if you're uh, going to build a Plex server at home. Obviously, you don't need this much for it. But I had the server here for testing. So I said, hey, why not do the demo and why not uh, dive into what it would look like and how fast it would run on here and the volume of videos I have on there. Like I said, it's a it's a decent amount of all the smaller videos, which is going to cause it to take a little bit longer to do the indexing on there for Plex to uh, build its database. Uh, but hopefully you found this enlightening or interesting. And now you hopefully have also a better understanding how the permissions and ACLs were so you can set up a Plex server, even if it's not as fast or as big as this one, but be able to get it going, be able to put your media in there and start sharing it. And these same concepts apply if you're not using Plex, if you're using one of the other plugins, you just have to find the username for that plugin and, you know, adjust this uh, tutorial accordingly. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.